map extends three miles long and two miles wide, and almost all of the lines run off the edge. So right away, you know they're more than three miles long. The longest line on record that I personally know about is about 20 to 22 miles long. And they can go even further than that. And they are perfectly straight. There are triangles. There are radiating triangles. And there are zigzags. In fact, it is a maze, and it is quite a problem to begin to study this textbook on the surface of the desert. Hawkins was asked to solve the mystery of the Nazca Lines. It took six expeditions for his team to carefully map the desert floor. They made precise measurements of the lines and the huge creatures. A bird. A whale. The question was, how and why did the Nazca Indians make these lines and drawings? Were the lines actually simpler to understand and explain? In this experiment, Peruvian students using ranging poles quickly drew a straight line by removing stones to reveal the yellow sand. Were the enormous figures extremely difficult to draw? Did the Indians have the ability of flight? Did they master the sophisticated technique of scaling up small drawings? Whatever the method, the results were perfect. Actually, a bad mistake on this desert would still show. The lines are 2,000 years old, and uh, if somebody had goofed, we would see their goof. I don't see any errors here. Hawkins fed the data into a computer and determined our immediate conclusion was that the lines as a whole are not an astronomical textbook for calendric purposes. Strangely enough, the lines that seem to work astronomically have a little picture on the end. Here we have a spider, and that line does indeed point to Orion. Here we have a condor bird, and this line does indeed point to the rising of the sun at midsummer and midwinter. But the overriding result that we found was that there were no two or three centuries in the history of this spot on the world where every line would fit the sun, moon, or star. One clue emerged to help explain the Nazca Lines riddle. It came from the nearby Alta Plano Indians. Their tribal legends speak of making the desert lines. The results that were obtained by questioning the Altiplano Indians show that the lines that they built were pointing to what they would call gods. These gods took many, many forms. One form the god could take would be a mountain peak. The higher the mountain peak, the greater the god. We also know there was a tendency to point to anything that was regarded as holy, perhaps a place where a yama gave birth, perhaps a place where a rainbow was seen to end. But Whatever these lines point to, it is going to be a mixture. There is no one particular object. The only thing that connects the lines together is that they probably point to God objects, and they probably are pathways connected with these gods. And so the only common denominator is that they are pathways to the gods.